I just replaced another multi-section electrolytic and I think the set's playing even better now noticeably better I'm also improving my technique of installing these and that's what I wanted to talk about for a moment I also want to check this cap and see if it was see if it's leaky as is the other one that I've replaced I still have two more multi-section caps to go let's try out the pyramid CRA one haven't used that in a while all three sections are supposed to be good for 450 volts let's give this a try I have this in the discharge position so I'm not gonna get shocked when I grab these leads here so the can is negative Let's go to one of the 40 microfarad. So there's two 40 microfarad sections and a 10 microfarad section. Let's check one of the 40s. So I uh, often use that solar tester because it's quick and easy to use, but it doesn't show you the actual current, the leakage current. It just flashes if there's leakage. This will actually show us the leakage current. So let's go to leakage. And right now, I let's see, let's get it, 200 volts. And we can check the leakage current. Wow. <laughs> if that's accurate, we have almost, and it is, I can see it's dropping now. We have 8 milliamps of leakage current. It only, what did I say, 200 volts? That's horrific. We should be in microamps. That is extremely leaky and very likely be getting warm uh, underneath that cardboard cover. Now if it's going to form up that should be dropping and it has, it has to be fair and obviously the set did work with this capacitor in it. Well, part of the reason I'm doing this is to illustrate that these sets, especially the well designed ones, can work with components that are no longer up to the original specification. And also to illustrate why I'm replacing them is that these components are no longer up to the original specification. Yes, it is forming up a bit. The current draw did drop. We can probably go to the 5 milliamp range now. So we're sitting at about 2.5 milliamps of leakage. Now remember, this is only with 200 volts. It's supposed to get up to 450 volts. I could sit here and I could baby this or maybe a few hours even. Maybe I get that leakage current down into an acceptable range, but uh, I, I and many, many, many other restorers concluded a long time ago, it's not worth all the time and effort, especially if it's for a customer, because I don't want to have to work on this again. No, not that the modern capacitors are going to last forever either, but uh, well, let me put it this way. I've never had a set come back. It's been about 15 minutes. I've been slowly increasing the voltage while minor monitoring the current leakage current. I'm at about 400 volts now and 8 milliamps. Now, I don't have the exact specs on this cap. I've asked around if anybody has specs on, say, the Mallory FP-type multi-section capacitor, which was so common back then, and nobody's been able to come up with it. Uh, so what I'm using as far as what's acceptable leakage current is going by more modern standards, which would certainly be less than one milliamp at applied fully, uh, at, at full uh, rated voltage. This is still dropping off, but not as much as it was initially. In other words, I wouldn't trust this capacitor. Here, I'll, uh, I'll hook up a modern one to give you some idea, but before we do that, let's just go all the way to 450. And we are at over 13 milliamps of leakage. Let's turn this down, discharge, 
and I don't trust this necessarily, so uh, double check with the voltmeter here and make sure that there's actually no voltage on that. Good. Less than a volt, okay. Even so, I try very hard not to hold both of these <laughs> clip leads at the same time. Alright, uh, so let's get uh, an equivalent one. I'll grab a 47 at 450. Yeah, just like the type I put in that. And this is rated for 105 degrees Celsius, high ripple current at 120 hertz. I heard some people say that, yeah, the new caps have a high uh, ripple current rating, but that's because for switch mode power supplies. Well, they do spec it out at 120 hertz, not uh, not in the kilohertz like a switch mode power supply would be running at. Alrighty, uh, now even these, even new ones, even brand new cap, if it's been sitting around for a while, even the manufacturer's data sheet says they do need to form up a little bit before they reach their, uh, their specified rating. So let's go back to leakage. Notice that current jumped up, that, uh, that's the capacitor charging up. So let's start at 200 like we did with the other cap. And 50, barely anything. 5 milliamp range, we are, what, 2 tenths of a million, 200 microamps? And it's dropping? Well, just jump right up to 400. Five milliamp range and dropping. We are at 800 microamps, 600 microamps, and dropping about 200 microamps now. So that's that's my basis for comparison for what I say is that we're we're talking 13 milliamps versus 150 microamps. what a factor of a uh, hundred <laughs> difference between the two well, and finally I'll just go up to 450 and that again about 150 microamps and dropping almost down to 100 microamps now so that's the difference that's why I'm replacing these caps I just replaced another capacitor with an adapter cap and some new caps. And it's, it's playing even better now, I think, noticeably. All four adapt caps have been installed to here. One there, and the final one was this guy underneath. Now if you go back and watch when I did an RCA 630TS some years ago, I restuffed all these caps and it was an enormous amount of work. I have several more of these to do, the two ATS30s and I have two more RCA 630TSs, basically the same cap layout. I am very much looking forward to using these that made the job much, much easier. Now, let's flip it back down, install a full size CRT, make sure it still works. And finally, at long last, here it is playing with a full size CRT. Now, there's no support on this chassis for a full-size CRT, so I just have some wood and cloth wedged underneath it. It's not seated 100% like it would be in the cabinet, so the pictures drop down a little bit. I'm not going to worry about making those adjustments until it's all put back together. Uh, likewise, the picture's a little bit fuzzy because my signal source isn't so hot right now, but <laughs> all that aside, the set is playing very, very well, very stable. 
RCA designed their early sets quite well, very well engineered. So I am calling this done until we can get things reassembled. The CRT is nice and bright too, which is a great plus. That's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching. When we pick up, we have a couple tasks. Uh, one, finish up a little bit on sprucing up the cabinet, reassembling this. I'll do another demonstration of it. And then we're going to start cutting this up so we can attach it to a program. I have to cut into cables and install some sockets. Not crazy about doing it in a nice restored set, but that's what we have to do to make it work with a program duo view. Thanks for watching.